afternoon, everyone. Yep. My name is Konstantinos Hailis, and I'm the Global Gas Markets and Technology Lead for Lloyd's Register. So this uh, presentation will be expro exploring the market outlook uh, for LPG and ammonia gas value chains, uh, the landscape on LPG as fuel prospects and opportunities as a transition portfolio, uh, addressing the key uh, uh, upcoming projects, uh, including the LGC of the future and uh, ammonia carrier scalability and concluding on technology uh, pathways for future-proof designs and how LR can help uh, our uh, stakeholders navigate through the transition pathways. Uh, so we continue to see <coughs> an upcoming rise in demand in commodities and also in the uh, increasing order book. Uh, 49 currently dual fuel VLGCs are in service and 76 are on order book, so over 90% of dual fuel uh, LPG ships on order book and in service are very large gas carriers. Uh, considering the shipbuilding capacity that it's on its knees, ordering a ship tomorrow if there was a slot availability, uh, earliest delivery would be 26, 27. Uh, uh, and with Korean yards at max capacity with flooded LNG orders, um, owners are more uh, active uh, engaging with the uh, Chinese yards. From a regulatory perspective, uh, compliance challenges hovering at our doorstep with CII implications and waiting time under time charter party agreements. Uh, and the age liability is also uh, another issue with 23% of existing VLGC fleet over 15%. If we put this into perspective, for a vessel built in 2008, um, the doing nothing scenario would not offer for much longer trading opportunities, of course always considering the operating profile of the vessel. However, uh, for example, considering a dual fuel engine and carbon capture of up to 30%, we could see an asset life extension of up to seven years. And of course, uh, it should also be worth noting that uh, recently delivered ships, uh, being more efficient and more environmentally friendly, uh, do uh, offer less carbon pricing impact costs. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the LPG prospects, uh, we do see ammonia as fuel uh, and also the old and new Panama Canal factor is something that plays a decision-making uh, uh, factor for 88K or 91K VLGC designs uh, that we see currently in Korea. Uh, and from the IMO LCA guidelines perspective, um, improved we we are hoping for the improved uh, certified uh, actual values versus default which are to be determined at the next MEPC 80th session in July 23. Um, <clears throat> the underdog as uh, Nikos uh, briefly mentioned a renewable and recycled dimethyl ether uh, is defined as a fuel produced from renewable uh, sources such as biomass or from renewable electricity with carbon capture. And it does have significantly lower carbon intensity and with, when mixed with uh, uh, LPG could reduce up to 30% the emissions. Um, and we see the max blending ratio of DME to LPG uh, 30 to 70%, so 30 DME, 70 LPG. Um, there are currently production companies in the UK and US, uh, such as the, the Meta, Oberon Fuels and Circular Fuels, with, which is a joint venture between SHV Energy and UGI International. And also it is worth noting our uh, current work with uh, the World LPG Association. So we are jointly developing an LPG as fuel guide uh, with WLPGA. And we are also doing a feasibility study or uh, with a major uh, sh container ship company uh, in order to retrofit a dual fuel LPG engine on a container ship. The operating profile in West Africa uh, offering more opportunities considering the ship size, economies of scale and lower commodity cost. Uh, so if we would put the transition portfolio into some aspects. Uh, as we mentioned, certified factors from LCA perspective and from a well-to-tank basis, the blending of uh, renewable LPG or DME, uh, carbon capture, Lloyd's Register is uh, 
has partnered with uh, a few uh, already manufacturers uh, and CCS makers. We have issued AIPs and we are also progressing with uh, joint development projects, JDPs, with uh, selecting owners, yards and engine makers. And from the ammonia and methanol compatibility, when we consider the fuel uh, and piping systems uh, compatibility in terms of the new con design. So from uh, LPG projects, we do see, as I said before, the 88 to 91K currently designed, Korea and China. Uh, and um, actually, most of the new, new buildings now are considering ammonia uh, capability. So ammonia carriage as a cargo. Um, so the VLGC of the future could look into hybrid electric dual fuel propulsion a uh, possible dead weight increase without really affecting the key ship particulars. Uh, so not to restrict the trading, but offer more operational flexibility. And there are several uh, projects uh, ongoing uh, for AIPs in terms of uh, ammonia fuel. Uh, the technology pathways are, of course, the, the first one, the dual fuel uh, engine, so there is the relevant LR notation and uh, the ammonia notation and uh, gas ready descriptive note. And we have also recently developed carbon capture and storage uh, notation and descriptive notes for uh, preparing either for retrofit or Nucon. Uh, this is just a list of our uh, latest uh, new buildings in China and Korea for dual fuel uh, designs. Uh, and in terms of the uh, value, value chain uh, for ammonia, uh, mainly only 10% of ammonia production is currently internationally traded. And basically over half of the produced ammonia is turned into urea in situ for fertilizers. However, as per the IAA, International Energy Agency, uh, it is estimated by 2050, 20 million tons per year to be internationally traded out of the 200 produced and unexpected demand of 85 million tons per annum by 2030. Uh, the most active projects for expansion in terms of dynamics we see are the following five Oman, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Mauritania and Ch Chile. Uh, and um, what is driving demand uh, is so far the co-firing uh, coal plants uh, in Japan, considering uh, ammonia and, and coal, and also green steel production. Uh, for ammonia trade today, we see around 1.3 uh, to 2 million tons per annum uh, from Middle East Gulf to Northeast Asia, and by 2040, an increased production up to 25 to 200 million, uh, mainly uh, Middle East, uh, Europe, Northeast Asia, China, etc. Um, prospects are uh, basically Lloyd's Register has developed several documentation working on ammonia and as I said the, the, main, uh, the main driver for uh, increasing ammonia production and demand is the co-firing plants and the green steel production mainly we see now in Japan. Uh, so in terms of projects we see interest and potential in scalability so the first is 150,000 cubic meters uh, design uh, and if we consider that ammonia as fuel has its own hazards and dangers uh, and complications we do see uh, an increasing interest from Asian owners to explore the FSRU option there are currently AIPs and JDPs in place uh, for a 60 to 80k design for an ammonia FSRU. And of course, uh, looking a bit longer term, we could see the ammonia to uh, hydrogen uh, carrier uh, capability. Uh, and uh, ammonia fueled ammonia carriers, currently the AIPs for a 95,000 design cubic meters. Uh, so, last but not least, uh, Lloyd's Register remains uh, number one uh, class uh, in the gas segment in both LNG and LPG uh, carriers. Uh, we are working with our uh, top uh, gas stakeholders and we are trying to 
bassist uh, and uh, basically navigate the transition pathways. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Gustavino.